So you're looking to purchase the Natasha Denona Trio Chrome Palette. Should you buy it? You've come to the right place. Today, I'm going to be duping the Natasha Denona Trio Chrome Palette, showcasing this eyeshadow look, going over the full storyline of Natasha Denona's color story in her palette and why I don't recommend this eyeshadow palette. I'll give you guys swatches and the shade names Welcome back to my channel. And if you're new here, I'm Kendra Morgan Official, and I like to put out content about single eyeshadows, makeup brushes that aren't Morphe, and sunscreen. So if you like that kind of content, make sure you subscribe to my channel below, and let's get started. Today I have for you guys not just what I would consider a dupe palette, but almost a replacement palette for the Natasha Denona Trio Chrome eyeshadow palette. Currently, this eyeshadow palette retails for $129 on the Natasha Denona website alongside Sephora. She is running a 25% off sale until November 8th, so if you are interested in picking up the eyeshadow palette or perhaps you are a longtime collector of Natasha Denona shadows, you can get it for 25% off until the 8th. I chose to dupe the palette using some very interesting shadows and also some theory into the shadows. So what I'm referring to that is, let's get started with the uh, color story that Natasha Denona chose. I'm gonna go ahead and put the uh, picture of Natasha Denona's palette up above and kind of give mine down here in the corner. But Natasha Denona, if you look row by row, she has a green row, a purple mauve row, and then the very bottom is an orange row, so to speak. So that what do we know about colors? Those are all secondary colors, meaning that two primary colors make up this secondary color. And if you mix two secondary colors together, you get a brown, and then if you mix all three, you would get a black. I don't know much about color theory, but I know enough about color theory to know that if you mix too many shadows together, you muddy up a really good look. And I think when we start getting into the Natasha Denona reviews or the Natasha Denona tutorials for this particular palette that she's putting out, we're gonna see a lot of muddying up of colors. We're gonna see a lot of oh, people giving you the feedback that, well, it's just coming out really muddy. Because if you start going across these columns and mixing a lot of them, you that's exactly what you're gonna come up with. I chose to dupe the palette with um, shades from Sydney Grace and Makeup Geek primarily with one color from ColourPop, which is this orange here, I think. It's the only one. And then I chose for my trio chrome or my multi-chromes, I chose from the Divina Aurora Flare Collection. So if you don't already have that collection, that's what I would recommend instead of purchasing the Natasha Denona palette. But before I get too far into that, I do wanna go over the shades and swatches. So I'm gonna go ahead and put up on the screen here, let me give myself a little bit of negative space. I'm gonna go ahead and put up on the screen here my swatches and I have it done in um, columns and rows just because I haven't taken the time, I apologize, but I haven't taken the time to um, look up shade for shade what I'm duping against the Natasha Denona palette. I just know what I'm duping against in from my collection. So I went ahead and laid them all out as if you were looking at Natasha Denona's. So it's gonna be, you know, three column, yeah, three rows, five columns. So you guys can just kind of square it up that way. I do wanna get this out before the sale ends so that way if you're looking to dupe the palette versus purchase the palette, you guys will have that decision making um, for you, you know, that information put out. <laughs> I do wanna feature this eyeshadow look. I'm gonna go ahead also here and put up on the screen the shade names associated with the pans that I went ahead and duped along with, so you guys can see, I used mostly Makeup Geek shadows. And I use mostly Makeup Geek shadows because I don't actually own a lot of the colors that are in Natasha Denona's palette. I'll be, I'll be very honest with you, I don't own them. I don't really aspire to own them because they're not really shades that I use a lot. And I I have no intentions of ever owning a sea foam green that blends out and has a blue gray base undertone. You know what I'm talking about if you have picked up the ColourPop Mandalorian, the Child palette, um, a couple of other shadows, or yeah, I see it in the Child palette and now I'm seeing it in the Natasha Denona Trio Chrome palette. So that's kind of a color that's trending right now. What I will say with that is it's very easy for that shadow to look 
unpleasant on my eyes anyways because I have blue eyes I don't really want an eyeshadow look that competes with my eyes some people do it looks beautiful on them they carry the personality and it it just suits them very well that's not particularly me without any further ado let's go ahead and get into this eyeshadow tutorial Maybelline eye studio this is blackest black whatever black you have shall do and grabbing my chic hold because they didn't have enough money to uh, do chic hold I guess I have a brush first impressions video coming soon but until then so you've already seen the look, but I'm gonna make it really bold. I want to lay down a black base and showcase these um, trio chromes. No, no. Okay, just tapping that in, tappy tap tap. Grab a brush and just blend out the edges. Just a bit. Here she be, folks, here she be. So you got your Divinia. I'm gonna check up on the name on how to pronounce that, but I think it's Divinia or it might be Divina. Not really sure, but anyways, we will um, throw a trichrome and then I will, <laughs> let's do green. I've been feeling the green vibe. Oh! Oh, Natasha, we're coming for you. Just pat this on there. This is a being applied dry, believe it or not. So, speaking of which, let me lay down some powder really quick. Brilliant. I changed some of my camera settings around just a bit, so you guys are probably seeing this. Long story short, um, I use LED and <laughs> you're able to see it because I upright, upped my frame rate per second, so. Sorry if that bothers you. I don't know what to tell you. It bothers me as well. I'm going to stick with one multi-chrome today for the simple reason that if you put too many multi-chromes on, you don't know which one's the culprit to the beauty, that kind of thing. Refer 15. I used all shimmers. Let's put, this is Leafing So Soon by Makeup Geek. Sea foam would be the Sydney Grace matte version of this. Take the cream shade right here and blend that in from the top down. So since this is very bold up on the top, I also wanna bold it down bottom. I have really big doll eyes, so I can afford this, but if you can't, stay on the lash line and just apply some liner kind of on the outside, and you could even pop a nude in the waterline. If your eyes are a little bit smaller, mine happen to be what I would consider more prominent or you know doll-like. So I will grab some of this gel liner right here and pop it in my waterline. I am bringing it down to the lash line as well because I intend to smoke out some green. Next with the Refer 12. I think I will just stay with the greens today because <sighs> I know I probably already talked about this, but these are secondary colors. I don't really want any mixing. I don't want a lot of muddying to my look. Oftentimes you'll hear it come out as, well, this is not true to the pan. That is because you are blending out the undertone and it's not really what you expected it to be. And again, back with the leafing so soon, blend that underneath the, trying to see, do I need any liner? I really don't want any liner because, I don't know if you guys can see this multi-chrome. It's a more of a yellow than a gold and it does shift blue, but come on, let's be real. Like <laughs> when I saw Natasha Denona, I was like, these are boring. All right, guys, I will do some mascara and some lashes and we'll be back with the final look. Okay, that is it. That is the eyeshadow tutorial. I did go ahead and do the other eye off camera. I think that kind of is um, a given, <laughs> but just in case you thought that I wasn't gonna do the other eye, 
I did it for you guys. I threw on some really pretty dramatic lashes for you for this particular look because I did do a pretty bold eyes. There you have that. But I just wanted to demonstrate that a lot of these multi-chrome shadows, to get them to shift multi-chrome and to really see the different colors, you wanna lay down a black base. It says it on the Davina website. It also says it on almost any of the other um, like Chaos Cosmetics, I think also mentions if you want the maximum payoff or the maximum showcasing of the pigment, lay down a deep, dark base. And I hope you guys enjoyed that. And now I want to get into my final thoughts on owning the Natasha Denona Trio Chrome Palette. If it is your desire to own it or you're a collector of Natasha Denona, by all means, I think that it's a great addition to your collection. However, if you're not somebody that trends towards these types of shades in palettes or you're not somebody that plays with a whole lot of color, my suggestion and don't let me tell you how to spend your money. <laughs> My suggestion would be to invest in the Davina Aurora Flare collection. It's going to restock and it will be um, available for purchase hopefully Black Friday. So it's already at a discounted price because it's in a bundle. So I think it's a great addition to your collection. Now, Natasha Denona is indie brand. I don't want to discredit that by any chance, any stretch of the imagination. However, Natasha Denona markets her products a little bit more mainstream. So if, for example, you look at MAC, you look at Urban Decay, you look at any of the other brands under Kendo or Cody, they, she would fit right in in, in terms of how she markets her products and how she prices her products too, as far as I'm concerned. I think that $129 is quite a, quite a huge chunk of money to spend on shadows that are a little bit more for the, either this is your personality or it's going to be a special occasion type of use. What I would do personally is go ahead and use the shadows that are already in your collection via singles or eyeshadow palettes that you may already own and then pick up the Aurora Flare collection. I'm not sponsored and I'm not being told to say this. I just really, really like the brand and I really have enjoyed playing with the Aurora Flare collection. So that's why I'm kind of promoting that. I really feel that's a very very nice asset to your collection i you had to use a lot of makeup geek rounds because i i don't own this kind of stuff there was a point in time when i picked up those types of shadows because i really liked them i don't any more trend that way anyways i'm more of a neutrals with a pop of color and you're not going to get that in this palette you are not going to get um, a neutral look and then putting like a duochrome on the eye and that's what i would personally do myself. I think that multi-chromes have their place, but they are show-stopping. They are the show. You don't really want to use a lot of color in and around those shadows. You want those to do the talking and let the other stuff just kind of a supporting shade in your look. That's why I don't necessarily agree with the Natasha Denona Trio Chrome eyeshadow palette. I'm not sure why a makeup artist would ever put together a, a color story where you have not one, not two, let's count it, three rows of secondary colors. And then I do wanna add one final note. Why did she put a cream shadow? I would have put, this is what I would have done if I were the makeup artist making this. I would have made this um, a black base that you could put all over the eye, kinda like what Huda Beauty did with her concealer shade. I would've just made it a black, like almost like a gel eyeliner. That's what I would have done. I would have put a black right there. And then you can put those multi-chromes right over your eyelids and take and buff and blend your favorite um, matte shadow over the top of it. Give, I wouldn't have fiddle farted around too much with trying to get, you know, um, a cream shadow in there. I feel like that's a waste of your money because I do have, you know, plenty of cream shadows. This is the Wet n Wild Brulee. And if you guys want to, you know, I've got that in a depotting video that I did recently. I'm gonna go ahead and link that in the eye and down below. So you guys can go check that out. But everybody's got a cream shadow. Everybody has access to a cream shadow and they really don't need to be pigmented. They don't need to be like far out there and just awesome, awesome shadows because they are generally t used for, you know, brow bone highlights or just to kind of help blend out some of the shadows so that you don't have a harsh line of demarcation. 
that's the end of this video. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I appreciate all your time and your support. If you haven't already, subscribe to my channel. I'm gonna put out more content like this in the future, and I hope you guys will join me. So, guys, I can't wait to see you in my next video. Bye.